If you've never tried painting with alcohol inks, now is the time to try. Check out some paintings that I've made. I usually like to keep my colors to about mm, two, maybe three at the most per painting. Um, they're easy to use. You do not need a lot of, you know, tools and supplies. You basically just need the inks. You need, I use Dupo paper, which is like a, it's like a plastic kind of non-absorbent paper. And, you know, the high percentage alcohol. I think I use 97% rubbing alcohol. Um, you need either a paintbrush or an eyedropper. Uh, a hairdryer is great for, you know, moving around the ink. So take a look and let's get started. Um, you can see that I used some painter's tape and I taped a small piece of Yupo paper down to a Lazy Susan that I covered with aluminum foil. And I started by using my eyedropper and just making some circles and some squiggles on the paper with regular plain old rubbing alcohol. Um, after that, I chose my colors. I like you know, blues and greens a lot. So I started with a dark blue and I didn't dilute these. Some of the dyes you can dilute down with alcohol and make them a little thinner. Um, I didn't do that. I put the dye right on the paper and I prefer to add alcohol to the paper most times to uh, dilute it. So you can see it's going to start to spread a little bit. And the thing that I really love about al alcohol ink is the fluid result. You can see it's just such a flowing, ethereal, beautiful, you know, movement on the paper or, a, you know, it's Yupo. So it's actually like a, a plastic. But what I'm using here is I use both a blow dryer and a heat gun. You have to be careful with the heat gun. First of all, they're hot. They can be dangerous if you're not used to using one. Um, they also can warp your paper if you hold it a little too close. You don't want to scorch or burn your, you know, your artwork. So the first thing I did was I put down some alcohol. I put a few drops of alcohol ink down and I kind of let the, you know, paint go where it's going to go. It's going to bloom out a little bit. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of help by using the heat gun or the hair dryer. And, um, the reason I use the Lazy Susan, as you can see, you need to move it around rather quickly. Now, the thing about alcohol inks, <laughs> it's like a balance between I've got to work fast and give it a moment to see where it's going to go and how it's going to move before I intervene with it and try to add more alcohol or more ink and maybe move things around. Um, so, you know, you do have to work kind of quickly with it. And you never know what kind of results you're going to get. Now, you can say, I'm going to do a landscape and I'm going to, you know, use, you know, blue for the sky, maybe brown for like an earth tone. And you can, you know, eventually with practice, you know, you can definitely do that. But I really like just the flowing, you know, beautiful designs that it creates just like an abstract kind of motif. So you'll see that when you apply... Uh, the dye, it'll, you know, the alcohol will repel the dye at times. Uh, you know, you'll need to move that dye and that alcohol around. That's why you use the dryer, you know, either the hair dryer or the heat gun. Uh, here I am adding a few more drops. Now, I started with a blue and kind of a brown, and I did add a little bit of like a greenish brown, which I kind of regretted that in the end because it has kind of like a yellow undertone, which I really didn't want but you never know what you're going to get. So here I added a little bit more, you know, alcohol. I'm moving it around. You add a little bit more dye where you need it. And the thing about this kind of art of alcohol ink and working with it, you know, it's not something where you just put the paint down and, and, you know, maybe add a little more. It's a lot of, um, I guess it's a lot of time I put into it. It's a lot of, you know, putting more alcohol down, putting more ink down, putting more alcohol, and, you know, and so on and so on. Um, there is a point you can get to where you can overwork it, where you've just kind of done too much and it turns into like a muddy mess that you don't want. But um, 
you know, what you can do is you can try to, you know, soak that Yupo paper in alcohol and wipe it down. And you can sometimes salvage the paper and use it again. Um, you will see, you know, often some of the dye still on the paper. But anyway, getting back to the video, um, you see how that blue went with the alcohol and it just creates like that sheen and it's like a silky kind of flowing look. The hairdryer helps that. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it on, I'm moving it around, it's drying very quickly. Uh, another thing I should mention is you need to work in a very well ventilated area. The alcohol smells and it can give you a headache. So if you're you know, the type of person who's prone to headaches, you definitely want to work where you have, you know, ample ventilation. Now, here's a little bit more of a close up with this piece that I'm working on right now. Um, you can see the depth of, you know, where it's lighter and darker, like to example, to the left, that blue gray kind of shade. And it's like a fabric like sheen. It's almost like, um, I keep saying silk. Um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but you can see it has that flow and it has that ripple kind of effect that you'll get when you use the heat gun or the dryer where the paint with the alcohol will move a little bit and then it'll dry and it'll move a little bit more and then it'll dry and you'll get that rippled effect. And you'll see that, you know, as I, you know, I'm just, you know, showing you, but, um, Moving it around, you definitely need to keep it moving. Um, if you get a big dark splotch, uh, you can add more alcohol and just, you know, tip it, turn it, blow it out. And I've even used like a little tiny corner of a tissue to dab. If I have like a big blob that's like, oh, why did I do that? I, you know, I can't put more alcohol on it because it's just going to kind of, you know, make a big white spot then in the middle of the dark spot. So you can play with it. Like, don't be afraid to, you know to mess with it. Like, don't be afraid to, you know, see what you can do to fix something. You know, that's how you learn. And that's how we discover new techniques and, and, you know, new things. So, um, here you can see it's getting that nice rippled kind of look. Now I could stop here, uh, but it's not deep enough for me. It doesn't have enough like of a 3d kind of effect, enough depth. So I'm going to continue um, to add more alcohol and to, you know, maybe add a little bit of dye if I have an area, you know, that I feel, you know, I just need that. So you can see here, I'm trying to thin that dark area out a little bit, letting the alcohol flow on it, letting it kind of spread out a bit and, you know, using my hands, tilting it, turning it, uh, trying not to get too many of those uh, like little fingers that can happen if you are um, blowing on it too hard with a hairdryer or a heat gun, unless you're going for that effect. I'm going for more of a billowy cloud-like effect. And um, like I said, I used uh, like a light brown and I used the blue and a tiny little bit of green I put in there. And um, I'm just doing, you know, layer upon layer. And you can see where it has like up toward the left of the screen where I have that brown area and you can see where it's like, like almost like a cloud. It's, it's like puffy and it looks just so, you know, ethereal. I can't think of another word for it right now, but, um, I don't have enough dye on this painting at this point. So I'm going to add some more. I'm going to blow it around there with my heat gun and, you know, you have to keep turning it. You can't hold that heat gun very close. Um, here I had a little too much and I just blew the dye right off of the, you know, right over that blue painter's tape and right off the painting, which was great. Uh, I had too much in one spot and that worked well for me. And the thing about using the painter's tape and taping it down to the foil, uh, some of the alcohol and dye, for me at least, <laughs> always seems to seep underneath my painting, which, I mean, there's no big consequence of that, you know, when you do peel off the tape, then you, it'll dry in a moment because, you know, alcohol evaporates very quickly. So, you know, that's one of the reasons you have to work kind of quickly. Um, it takes a little practice. Uh, you know, every painting is beautiful that, that you do. Um, here I'm taking a closer look. And once I'm happy 
with, you know, my basic, you know, background, I'm going to add some details. And I use these fingernail painting um, dotters. Um, people buy them nowadays and they use them to do that polka dot art on stones. They're really expensive, inexpensive, excuse me. You can get a set of these dotters on Amazon for under $20. And I mean, I bought a set and it had like 20 tools in it and they're great. Um, they're not just perfect for putting little drops of alcohol down as I'm doing here, um, but you can use them. Like I said, you can use them with paintings. You can use them, make those stones that they, the river stones, you know, there's so many things you can do with these inexpensive tools. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding some detail. I am dipping the end of the daughter into some uh, pure alcohol. Um, when I say pure, I mean, there's no ink in it. It is just 97%. Uh, rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to put little dots here and there. Now, those daughter tools come in different size ends um, for maybe, I think the smallest one I have is like three millimeter, all the way up till about maybe six or eight millimeter in size. And, um, you know, the smaller of the tip that you use, the smaller of the dot you're going to get. Um, sometimes you have to you know, work a little quickly with it. If it's a really, you know, breezy or dry room that you're in, it'll dry, you know, your alcohol will dry up a lot quicker. So you'll see me sometimes putting on a dot of that and it, nothing shows up. So I have to do it again. But that's just, you know, the way it works. So here I'm just, you know, adding a little bit, um, giving it a little bit of character with those dots. And I'm just doing kind of one corner, like I did the one blue corner. Now I'm up in the brown corner. And I'm going to do some larger ones and some smaller ones. I'm trying not to overdo it. And I'm also trying not to put any of those dots where I have, like, toward the left or toward the center. You can see that ripple effect. I'm trying not to cover that up. Like, I love that. I might put one or two here and there, you know, to kind of... Um, I want to bridge together the dots that I put in the blue corner and the dots that I just put in the brown corner. So I might put a little bit like toward the center, kind of like meandering across the painting. But I'm not going to go too crazy. And, you know, I have to tell myself, OK, whoa, like stop, because <laughs> sometimes you can get carried away. It's fun and it's meditative. It's just like I make um, uh, Ukrainian eggs called pasanki. I make those. And that's another craft that is just so meditative. You really, you can get lost in your thoughts. You know, it's so relaxing. Well, so is, you know, alcohol ink painting, especially when you're doing those little details. Um, so I'm going to look back at it a little bit and, you know, see where I think it might need a little bit more, you know, details. Now, if I wanted to, I could add more alcohol and more dye to um, go over that a little bit if I wanted or change the painting in some way. It's abstract art and, you know, it's free form and you can do whatever you like with it. I'm just kind of playing around. And if I make something that I consider a mistake, well, then I'll just try to fix it as best I can. There's a few areas there I thought that were a little bit dark. Um, that one dark blue spot kind of in the center. I'll put maybe a drop or two on there of alcohol, kind of push that dye apart a little bit. If I find that I have a spot where it's just kind of, you know, like I said earlier, just like, oh, there's just like this one spot where all the ink kind of went together there. And it's like a big dark spot and it catches my eye and it bothers me. I'll put a little bit of, you know, alcohol on it and I'll just dab it with a tissue or, you know, a little piece of a paper towel and, you know, and then I'll try again and I'll clean it up. So, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint, the, I'm sorry, the painter's tape off of it and take a look at it. And that's all you do. Um, I hope that you like this video. I hope you give it a try yourself. You can buy these at virtually any craft store. You can buy them online as well as, you know, in person. Pick up some of that Yupo paper. It's a little expensive, but you can cut the larger, you know, pieces down into smaller pieces. But you know, take a look at how this looks now with, especially with light behind it. I scan these and I put them on my computer and I can make prints and they're just beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try out alcohol ink yourself and you know that you enjoy it. So 
Don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.